polo for me i heard about it a lot and i ran into the odd event here and there went to an after polo party i always had fun at that and uh somehow it just kind of kept coming back into my life and i was actually here in buenos aires more to practice spanish and travel and a friend of mine called me and said darren you gotta buy you gotta buy polo gear and i said what i don't what do i want to what do i want to buy polo gear for he says no we'll have fun we'll play it and uh I said, well, where do I go? And he gave me the name of, I think it was Casablanca. So I went and I bought, bought gear, went home, threw it in the closet, never thought anything more about it. And then uh, four or five years later, some people uh, got me into arena polo. And that was where, that was where I really started to learn to ride a horse because that was probably my biggest disadvantage uh, to get moving in the, in the world of polo. And it was on and off for several years. And then six years ago, I really got serious about it, came down here. Uh, hit the fields in, in Pilar, and uh, now we haven't looked back. Great. But you born in Alberta, isn't it? Or tell us your, your days in Alberta when you were young. Yeah, I grew up in, in Alberta, Canada, racing motocross. So uh, extreme sports was always in my blood, and that was, that was my, my life. Uh, every day I was up early on the bike, and it's a lot similar to the polo world. When you really want to be serious in polo, you have to be up early. and and uh, on the horse and so that was in my blood but I left motocross because of all the injuries that I had over the years and uh, so being able to come back into a sport was really something that was missing in my life so it's probably why I've taken it so seriously it's not a not a professional player but it's uh, I try to take that that regime and training that I learned in motocross uh, into my polo world. What is similar between the motorbikes and the horses? So I, I've been asked that a lot. Uh, a lot of people talk about if balance helps. I think if anything, I think the horse has helped me balance better on a bike. I don't, I don't actively race anymore uh, in the supercross or motocross world. But, but um, I, I would say the horse has actually helped me be, gain so much more strength that I didn't have when I raced motocross. And, uh, but the, there is a balance aspect and a core strength to it in, in your legs. Uh, but the horse is definitely a lot more intense. And then from, a, from an actual competition perspective, when you're new on the horse, the adrenaline is just the same as, as motocross. It's, I would much rather fall on a horse. Like I, I don't mind falling on a horse at all because of the, the difference of falling off a dirt bike at 50 or 60 or 80 kilometers an hour versus a horse. There's, there's no comparison, but I haven't had a horse fall on me either. So I think they're both incredibly dangerous sports. Um, when I lined up at the starting line of motocross, the, the fear of that, when, you, when, you're, when you're in the starting gate and you have 40 riders beside you, the fear and the adrenaline and the nerves that that produced is probably most similar on the horse when you're pushing with four or five riders at full speed, you're going 60, 45, 50 kilometers an hour. Um, you know, and you're pushing each other around, that, that's probably where it gets most similar in terms of the adrenaline, but yeah, both, both, especially me being new on the horse, uh, I've had the same adrenaline that I had in the motocross days. What do you remember of your first polo day, the first time that you played polo? I'm trying to remember the, f oh, so I remember the, the first time I rode a horse uh, was a class in Costa Rica uh, with a friend of mine there, Victor Wolf. He's helped a lot of people learn to ride and really promoted the sport well in Costa Rica. And I remember getting on the horse or coming to talk to him and he says to me, how many times do you ride? And, and riding for me, like if you're a snowboarder, riding is a snowboard. If you're a skier, riding is, a, is skis. So when he says riding, my default was, oh, how'd you know I ride bikes? And, you know, he was talking to horses. And I said, oh, no, horses, I've, I've never ridden them. And he says, oh, he says, well, this is a polo class. Well, leave the mallet. So we threw the mallet and he gave me a, he gave me a, a horse riding class. And then I think the second time he gave me the mallet and I held it in my left hand and he said, no, 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 hold it in your right hand. And I said, no, 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 I'm a left-handed. And he goes, no, 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 polo's a right-handed sport. And I said, no, no, I'm left-handed. <laughs> and he said, no, you don't get it. Uh, the, the rules of polo don't let you play left. And I couldn't understand why, but uh, later I figured out for obviously to avoid collisions. So that was my first, first experience of really being around the horses. And then... And then, you know, there's a difference between arena polo and there's a difference between uh, grass polo. They're, they're two different sports. I played two seasons or three seasons of arena polo and I thought I knew something about riding a horse. And then when I went to the green, it was, it was starting all over again. 
And I think that might have been in Thailand, actually the first time I, I touched the greens. And, and then it was here in Pilar. Actually, Costa Rica was probably my first, first time. And I don't really remember much of it because I just remember uh, there was there was a year of just starting all over. I thought I knew how to ride a horse. I knew nothing. And it was horrible. It was depressing because I wanted to do something in the sport. And just realizing that the time I had spent thinking I had learned to ride, I had to start all over again because of the speed now. And, you know, the ball goes from this big to to that big. Tell us your connection with uh, Fred Manny. Fred is, I mean, Fred... Where, where do you start with Fred? He is such a humble and good human being at his core. Uh, we grew up three hours away from each other. Our parents' farms are, are very close. Um, and, and when you look at the world of polo, and of course Fred will never tell people this, but I mean, he's a legend in polo, what he's done and what his family has done and the organization of Alegria, because to come to play the Argentine Open, there's, if, I mean, you and I, have, we'd, we'd have to count him count the amount of people that have done it as foreigners, but you've got a 99% Argentine dominated sport at the top. And you've got these few anomalies like Fred, um, maybe Pelon, and a couple of handful of other people, some Mexicans, probably some Americans over the years that have really come and played at the top level. Uh, so it'll probably never happen again in history that'll, that'll they'll do what Fred has been able to do, you know, playing the Palermo final, uh, getting to say he's one of the few people who've beat La Lofina in their prime. Uh, he's done some pretty incredible things. Um, but aside from that, uh, Fred's just a really good supportive friend and he's really, he's really, you know, it's nice that we, we uh, it's coincidental that we grew up so close to each other in Canada, not knowing each other and then ended up here in Pilar 20 minutes away from each other on the other side of the world. Uh, so I think that's something that's been special for both of us is just being Alberta boys, uh, both in love with the same sport, both dedicated to the same thing. And, and uh, he's a hell of an entrepreneur on the side. So we've got a lot in common and it's been really good to uh, start working together at Alegria and bringing the team to Costa Rica. And when you thought this idea to, to become a player of Alegria or to play with the Alegria color? It, so the concept of Alegria Costa Rica started here at here at Alegria headquarters. I think it was uh, October of last year, probably during an asado. And I think the, the idea was, hey, we're going to put an organization in, in Costa Rica. Uh, what team? What team are we going to put in? Speaking with my team back in in Costa Rica, and then I think the combo happened between Fred and I. I think I just said to him, hey, what do you think about bringing? Uh, Alegria to Costa Rica and putting the brand in there and I think that was how the conversation started and I remember him I, I remember it was kind of a it was kind of a stupid idea at first and then he really lit up about it and then him and I both started to build on the idea uh, he's a really creative strategic mind and so we always have fun talking about these things and I think the idea just grew organically from there uh, we didn't know how much fun it was gonna be I mean this year was a was a really cool year uh, in Costa Rica despite COVID and now the ideas keep growing and, and, and building. And of course, the idea is to bring the breed there because Alegria's breed is probably the best kept secret, in my opinion, here as an outsider. It's uh, if you've been to the, the facilities here where we're, where we're chatting right now, or if you go to the farms, uh, Corcho runs an amazingly tight show there with the Mannix family. They've, there's a lot of organizations that have a beautiful storefront. You know, they show their best face, uh, like here, beautiful grounds. But you go to the back office of Alegria and it's as good or better. It's, it's really impressive uh, how serious they take their organization. So I'm really excited to be able to uh, represent Alegria because it's, you know, it's Canadian born. Uh, I think that was the, the organic part of it is we're all from the same, from the same area and uh, doing the same thing, but obviously at completely different levels. And I think Fred now, you know, post Abierto days, uh, I've seen that he's really still supporting Polo a lot, helping a lot of new players like me. And so this gives us a way as well to, to promote the brand and get more people into Polo and, and uh, eventually spread the breed around the world as their, as their uh, horses are becoming more and more available. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it.